and the little gray cells. These will always catch the criminal. Hercule Poirot, Detective Extraordinary. <laughs> Filled pack pages of Agatha Christie's unforgettable stories of corpses, clues, and crimes. Mutual now brings you, complete with bowler hat and magnificent mustache, your favorite detective, Hercule Poirot. Starring Harold Huber in The Adventure of the Money Mad Ghoul. Good morning, Inspector Stevens. It is just uh, 8.30. Do not tell me you have become a victim of the insomnia. I'm not in the mood for kidding, Poirot. I've been up all night, but not with insomnia. I've just come from the Pleasant Valley Cemetery. In that case, permit me to say that you are a singularly healthy-looking ghost. That may be funny to you, but I frankly admit that I'm worried. There have been six grave robberies at Pleasant Valley in the last two months. Then, my chef Stevens, I advise you to look for a tall, red-headed man who walks with a limp, huh? is left-handed, and wears glasses. Oh, you're amazing. How do you know? Mon ami, your faith in me is touching. You enter my apartment and tell me that some graves have been robbed and honestly believe that I know the criminal's identity. I assure you I am as much in the dark as you. Until that is you, provide me with more information. Oh. Well, here are the facts as I have them. The robbery started about two months ago with the opening of the grave of Robert Alden. This was followed a few days later by the grave robbery of James Bennett. In the next six weeks, the graves of Richard Colt, Alan Devers, Victor Edwards, and Michael Fallon were opened and desecrated. Impossible. Exactly what did these ghouls take from the grave? Everything. A little moment, Stephen. You are trying to tell me that these ghouls took with them the casket and the body? That's just what they did. Took everything, and it beats me what in the devil. Ah, ah, ah. Do not fly out of the handle, mon vieux. Uh, tell me, were these old graves which were violated? Funny you should ask me that. All of them were the graves of people who died recently. And that gives one two things. Eh, my friend? And now you will please get for me the names and the locations of the graves of people who have died recently whose last name starts with a G. With a G? What are you driving at? Will you repeat for me the last names of the former occupants of the graves that have already been robbed? Oh, Alden, Bennett, Colt, Devers, Edwards, Fallon. Stevens, A, B, C, D, E, F. That is curious, Nesta. Strange enough so that you and I shall watch at the graves of the lately departed whose last names begin with a G. I'm beginning to feel more like a grave watcher than a police officer, Poirot. Do not fear, mon brave. No one would ever suspect you of being anything but a police officer. Uh, Flash the light on the tombstone, please. We must make certain this is the grave we seek. All right. There we are. Yeah, hey, this is it, all right. Herman Gilbert. Died May 16th, 1945. Both. Let us conceal ourselves behind this hedge and wait. I think this your Gilbert will have visitors. I don't know what makes you so sure. There were four other people whose last name started with G. Who, mon ami? But this is the most recent. You know, Poirot, I, I hate to admit this, but I'm mighty glad you're here with me. I don't like cemeteries. They're too gloomy and damp to suit me. Stephen, hush! Hmm? You were right, Poirot. Someone coming. Yes, and with the proper tools for their grisly work. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh! Let me see it. Hey, stop. come back! Stop or I'll fire! Tell me what your angle on this case is. At least you might tell me where you're going. Mon ami, if you promise not to sneeze, I will tell you. You can't blame me for sneezing. I couldn't help it. It is not the sneeze that annoys me. It is the effect it had upon the case. Now these robbers are warned that we are on the scent. They will be more cautious. Well, where are we going? We are here, at the place Robert Alden lived. Oh. The first person whose grave was opened. Is it not significant to you also, Stevens, that there have been no graves of women disturbed? Yeah, that's so. I never thought of that. You did not. I was so sure you had. Well, 
Well, what is it? Speak up. Don't keep me standing here in the draft. Pardon, monsieur. But did they Robert Alden live here? Robert Alden? Yes, he certainly did, but you can't see him. He's dead. That we already know, monsieur. We would like some information. Why? What are you bothering about Robert Alden for? This is Inspector Stevens of the New York Police. And we wish some information. Robert Alden was a fine man. As fine a man as ever lived. He used to try to cheat me at checkers once in a while, but I was too smart for him. Were you related? No, but he was my best friend and lived with me in this house for over 20 years. Then perhaps we could see his wife. <laughs> That's a good one. Robert never married at all. He was a bachelor until the day he died. I see. Uh, were you at the funeral, monsieur? Of course I was. Don't you think I have any decent feelings? I even remember the date. It was uh, uh, June 13th. Yeah? Uh, June 13th, 1920. Oh, I'm all in, Poirot. And I don't understand this. Alden's been dead for 25 years. Nobody ever heard of Devers, Edwards, and Fallon. I can't make any sense out of this. Patience, mon ami. We do know that there was a Richard Coach. And that he has a widow. Yeah. Ah, here's the house now. I beg of you to allow me to ask the questions, eh? The poor lady will doubtless be upset by her recent bereavement. Okay, Poirot, I'll let you handle everything. <laughs> yeah, she seems upset, all right. Madame Cole? Uh, well, yes, I'm Mrs. Cole. What is it you wish? Are you Madame Richard Cole? Oh, I suppose it's my husband you want to see. I'll call him. Hmm? Yes? Oh, dear, darling. What the devil? Am I crazy or... Yes, madam. We should very much like to see your husband. Coming, Lydia. Well, darling, what's this all about? Who are these people, friends of yours? I'd like to know what this is all about, all right. Please, mon cher Stevens. Monsieur, I am Hercule Poirot, and this is Inspector Stevens of the police. He is disturbed because uh, he finds you a singularly healthy ghost. Ghost? I don't know what you're talking about. You have had no other husbands, madam? What are you saying? If this is some kind of game, I don't like it. Be quiet, Dick. There's evidently been some mistake. No, Mr. Poirot, Dick is my only husband. Well, he ought to be dead. Well, I'll really? touch you right on all. Gently, uh, gently. And now, Madame Colt, if you would be so good as to close the door, we will attempt to perceive the reason behind your husband's so sudden return to life. Now, let's get to the bottom of this. That is exactly what we wish. You, Monsieur Colt, are supposed to have died on the uh, 3rd of August of this year. <laughs> I never felt better in my life. Who on earth could have played such a horrible joke on it? Madame, I assure you, this is no joke. But but there must be other Richard Colts in New York. Are you sure you have the right one? Yeah, we got the right Richard Colt. The manager of Pleasant Valley Cemetery gave us your address. I think you two better come along with me. That will not be necessary, mon ami. We have a more logical task to perform. We go to call on the manager of the Pleasant Valley Cemetery. <laughs> Stephen, have you made an arrest as yet? No, I'm sorry to say we haven't. This is dreadful, simply dreadful. I don't know what the world's coming to when even a cemetery is no longer a peaceful place. Uh, yeah, I know how you feel, Mr. Kenton. Oh, this is Hercule Poirot, Mr. Kenton, the manager here. Well, Inspector, you are making progress after all if you've obtained the assistance of the famous Mr. Poirot. Thank you, Mr. Kenton. And now, as one man of intelligence to another, eh? Uh, perhaps you would like to answer a few questions for me. Certainly. Uh, what is it you'd like to know? What is the procedure for the interment of a body in this cemetery? By that I mean, do you personally see the bodies when they arrive here for burial? Uh, no, Mr. Poirot. That is hardly necessary. All that is required is the issuance of a death certificate. Then you did not actually yourself see the body of Monsieur Richard Colt? Why, no. I should have thought it most unusual if I had. The undertaker simply gives me the necessary papers, and I make out the assignment of the grave. And the name of the undertaker, if you please. Well, uh, let me see. I'm sure I have it here in the files. Uh, yes, yes, it's Love. Uh, Kermit J. Love. And the address? Uh, 6611 Ithaca Street. And now, if you would be so kind, could I perhaps have the names of the undertakers for the other five bodies disturbed by the ghouls? Well... I, uh, that will be difficult. But perhaps I can mail that information to you tomorrow. Uh, I regret to disturb you, but I should like it now. Very well. I, here's a strange coincidence. What's that? If I may be permitted to guess, Monsieur, 
It is that Monsieur Kermit J. Love is also the undertaker for the other. Uh, uh, yes, that is correct, Mr. Poirot. And now, Stevens, we go to walk into the parlor of Monsieur Love. One could be at peace in so gentle an atmosphere, mon ami. Did you not hear those beautiful chimes? That is enough pushing on the bell, Stephen. Someone is coming to the door. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Won't you come in? Thank you, Monsieur Love. Come, Stephen. May I offer my profound sympathy to your great loss? You may rest assured that Kermit J. Love will do all in his power to assist you in this moment of need. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Of course. We handle all the necessary details. You've got the wrong idea. We want... I understand. Perhaps you would like your little friend here to speak for you. That is an excellent idea, Monsieur Love. Uh, wait outside for me, Stephen. I will take care of all details. Oh, well... Well, all right, but I don't see why I... Your friend is quite upset. Was it his wife? No, he is not married. I see. Then his mother, perhaps. Or some other close member of the family. No, 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 no. It is not that at all, Monsieur... But I don't quite understand. Then perhaps this will assist you. Were you not the undertaker for Alden, Bennett, Colt, Devil, Edward, and Fallon? I'm afraid that is a rather unethical question. Unethical question? Oh, now it is I who do not understand, monsieur. Uh, sir, you certainly don't understand. I take my profession seriously. If I may say so, I am doctor, lawyer, and minister to the dead. It is I who escort them into the next world, so to speak. And I also, monsieur, take my profession seriously. Which is of no interest to me. You are exceedingly rude and inquisitive. I will not have the secrets of the dead laid bare. They must rest. Rest in peace. But that is just what they have not been allowed to do, monsieur. That is regrettable. But I don't see how it concerns me. Uh, this is a most magnificent establishment you have here. Thank you. Good day. Uh, tell me. What are those cabinets in the wall? Don't... Don't touch them. They are resting places for those awaiting burial. And they are occupied now? Most certainly. Ah? I see the cards say that two of them are occupied by Monsieur P. Fox and Monsieur S. Martin. I don't like your attitude. As I told you before, it's rude and unethical. Rude? To inquire about your business with Monsieur Alden, Bennett, Colt, Devils, and Silence? I am interested in whether you were the undertaker for those gentlemen, Monsieur Love. You came in here with your friend and led me to believe you were seeking my professional service. One moment, Monsieur. I'm afraid you leaped too quickly to that conclusion. My friend and I said nothing. I am not permitted to release the information you've asked for. Well, perhaps you will be good enough to oblige me when you learn the identity of my friend who waits outside. If you will excuse me, I have some duties to perform. He is Inspector Stevens of the New York Police. I can ask him to make this request for me. Oh. Oh, the police? Well, that's an entirely different matter. Yes, I was the undertaker for the late gentleman you mentioned. And you saw the bodies? Naturally. You are quite certain of this, monsieur. Kermit J. Love Incorporated is a reputable firm. We have been in business for the last 27 years. If I tell you I saw the bodies, there are no further questions necessary. Now, is there anything else you'd like to know? No, monsieur, that will be all for the moment. <laughs> Looks like this time I was right. Kenton has no business down in this part of town. Patience, mon ami. We have not yet seen what Monsieur Kenton does here. Well, we've seen enough for me. He ducked out of his house, and ever since we've been following him, he's been acting suspicious. Besides, there's nothing down here except factories and warehouses, and they're closed at night. We will see. A hand move here. Hmm? It appears you may be right. Do you notice that car just turning the corner? Uh, hush! Oh, I believe we got him. Kenton's in on this. Gently, gently. Let us stand in this doorway and observe what is going on, eh? Hey, they're going to break into that cold storage plant. Come on, Poirot. Hold up your hands! Get Kenton, Poirot. He's just turned the corner. Come back! Stop! Hold! Somebody. 
All right, Captain, speak up. We know everything. Speak for yourself, monsieur. There are still a few things that puzzle me. <laughs> it's, it's as plain as pike staff. Come along, Kenton. Take your hands off of me. I warn you, Inspector, I'll sue you for false arrest. What's the meaning of always shouting and shooting? Monsieur Kenton, uh, perhaps you will be kind enough to explain what you were doing in this neighborhood at this time of night? Certainly. I was going to get some pipe tobacco. <laughs> ah, if you can't think of a better one than that, Kenton. Come along. Let us permit Monsieur Kenton to finish. You'd better. You'll be making a bad mistake. It just so happens that I smoke a special kind of tobacco. Mixed for me by a friend of mine. His name? His name happens to be Rosemary Leeds. She's a very charming girl engaged to my son. She's a chemist. She happens to have her office down here, and once in a while she mixes a particularly mild mixture for me, and I come down, pick it up, and take her home. Yeah, well, that's a good one, all right. I suppose you didn't see that hearse. I didn't see anything, but I heard a lot. And then Mr. Poirot asked me to come with him. Poirot, I've got this all figured now. Somehow they're taking the bodies out of the cemetery to the cold storage plant and leaving them there. What for, mon brave? Well, I don't know yet, but I'm going to find out. Do that, mon cher Stevens. And while you risk pneumonia, I will check upon Monsieur Kenton. Come, monsieur. We will see whether this member leaves is waiting for you with your tobacco. <laughs> Pardon, are you referring to the case of the counterfeit dentist? You know darn well what I'm talking about. If you don't stop investigating those empty graves, you'll find yourself filling one of them. I think not, monsieur. What makes you so sure? But it is obvious. You have not yet come to the letter P. Wise guy. <laughs> good day, Stephen. Yeah, what's good about us? We're not getting anywhere at all. I still don't trust that Kenton. I know his alibi stood up, but that dame's engaged to his son. Maybe they're all in it together. Well, have you got anything new? I have just been informed that we have made considerable headway. Yeah? Who told you? I do not know. Well, that's fine. We're making headway, but you don't know how. Uh, uh, uh. I do know how. It is that I do not know who. I have just received a telephone threat against the life of Hercule Poirot. All right, all right, but I don't see how that helps. You get those all the time. Observe, mon ami. Only one of four people could have inspired that telephone call. Either Monsieur or Madame Colt, Monsieur Kenton, the manager of Pleasant Valley Cemetery, or Monsieur Kermit J. Love, this so sympathetic undertaker. Well, yeah, I suppose you're right. But of course. What are you doing? Calling Monsieur Kenton. Pleasant Valley Cemetery? Uh, Monsieur Kenton, this is Hercule Poirot. Uh, tell me, if you please, have you any funerals scheduled from the establishment of Kermit J. Love for today? Uh, yes, I have three. And their last names? Uh, Wing, Levitt, and Harkness. Ah, indeed. And what time is the Harkness funeral? Well, that's strange. Kermit Love just phoned me about moving the time up to 10 o'clock this morning. A thousand thanks, Monsieur Kenton. Quickly, Stevens, a police car and an escort. Hmm? We must be at Pleasant Valley Cemetery in 15 minutes. What for? To attend a funeral. The Harkness grave. Where is it to be? In the east plot, directly up this path. This way, Stevens. Bring your men. We must hurry. But uh, what's wrong, Mr. Farrow? Why the police? If we are not too late, you will have your answer. Stevens, look. They're on the hill. They're getting into their car. Yeah. Stop! Stop! Save your breath and your ammunition. They're out of range. Uh, we're always too late in this case. I would not say that, my friend. Regard. We put them to such haste, they neglected to bury Monsieur Harkness. Great Scott. Coffin's empty. They took Harkness's body with them. Come, come, Stevens. Your face shows the worries of the world. Do not be so depressed. Well, I'm not exactly happy, Poirot. Never taken you so long to figure out a case. You always had something that helped us when I came to your apartment before. Patience, mon ami. The harvesting of the clues grows near, eh? I can't wait for any harvest. 
I'm going to take all the people involved in this case and throw them into jail. Ah, 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 mon ami. Now you are not using your little gray cells? Well, you work on the gray cells. I'm going to fill my cells down at police headquarters. And that will be a benefit to no one. We must proceed with calm. How can I be calm? We're up against a dead end. If we'd only gotten to that cemetery five minutes earlier. Eh, this whole thing's driving me crazy. I admit the case holds a few peculiar aspects. Peculiar? Is that all you can call it? Now, look, Poirot, we go to a funeral, but before we get there, the mourners decide to take a powder. Then they take the body with them. What's going on? Am I losing my mind? I can only reflect on the case itself, Stephen, not on your personality. Why are you so quiet? You got something up your sleeve? It is always possible that something may pop out. Well, it had better soon. I can't stand much more of this. The funeral this morning was too much for me. I still can't understand what they wanted with that body. Ah, could be. It is I, Stevens. I, Hercule Poirot, who have been blind. What do you mean, Poirot? What's the matter? Stevens, it has been in front of my eyes all this time. The most important clue. And I have kicked it away like an unwanted bill. Okay, okay, let's have it. Listen carefully, Stevens. This morning at the cemetery, when we frightened the men away. You remember? Yeah, of course. Go on. Now, think carefully. You did not see any of those men carry a body with them. Mm, wait a minute. No. No. They weren't. You're right. Exactly. And the reason they were not carrying a body was because there was no body to carry. What? But the question remains, what was in that coffin that they were so anxious to take with them? Well, I don't know. Do you? I have a small idea. What else can you put in the casket except a body? A great many things, mon ami. But the point to follow here is about the bodies which were removed from the six open graves. Yeah, what about them? Think back to our interview with Monsieur and Madame Colte. He was very much alive. And we could not find even a trace of those other dead gentlemen, except... Except Robert Alden, who'd been dead for 25 years. Exactly. Now, do you not see? No, I don't. The answer to my question is so simple, mon dieu. There never were bodies in the graves that were opened. Oh, I get it. Why, that's wonderful, Poirot. <laughs> I still don't get the idea behind these phony burials and what sort of racket they've been running. Well, that is a two-part question, mon ami. The first part, I know. The second part, in due time. You mean you know who's in back of all this? There is only one possibility, Stephen. Since there were no bodies in the six graves that were opened, we can now proceed to apprehend the one man who claims to have seen all the six bodies. Kermit J. Love, the undertaker. Yeah, but I think Kenton was in on it with him. He needed an accomplice. Hmm, possibly. But it is Monsieur Love who interests me. And with such a man, we will have to move most carefully, eh? Have you ever tried to arrest a ghost? Uh, maybe not, Poirot. But love won't find me so easy to use in his disappearing bodies act. And this time, Kenton won't have an alibi. Come, mon père. Where are we going? To a perfume store, and then to the funeral parlor of Monsieur Love. Perfume store? This is no time to be buying gifts. It is not a gift. I require some perfume. Okay, okay. This time I know which one of us is going crazy. <laughs> sleep in this building. Ah, what have we here? Mm, they are beautiful. They are worth a great fortune. I admire your taste, Monsieur Barrow. Ah, Monsieur Love, it is I who must compliment you. These stolen furs are among the finest I have ever seen. We took great care in selecting them. And these sables, magnifique. But did you not have difficulty in disposing of them? Ordinarily, we would have. But you initiated a new system, not that? A system of cold storage, I would say. Precisely. You put the furs in a coffin, selected a name at random, then buried only the name. The coffin contained the furs. Who would think of looking for furs in a cemetery? No one, monsieur. However, do you not think it was a bit obvious to proceed alphabetically so that you would know in what order to dig up the coffin? We found it very satisfactory. What made you suspect us? An even more obvious mistake, monsieur. Come, monsieur. Marking the cabinets that were supposed to contain bodies, but which actually held the stolen furs, S. Martin, P. Fox. If you intended that as a joke, it was a poor one. I'm afraid it was just expedient, Mr. Poirot. I have no sense of humor. Well, monsieur, I'm glad to see that you are so reasonable. Inspector Stevens is waiting outside. Danny! 
Yes, Mr. Love. Ah, the driver of the hearse, Monsieur Denny. <laughs> it is only natural he would be in this little game. His name, Mr. Poirot, in your case, should be Sharon. An apt illusion, Monsieur Love. Sharon ferried the bodies of the living across the river Styx, and they died. Which is exactly what is going to happen to you. But, Monsieur, did I not tell you that Inspector Stevens is waiting outside? But the way you're going out of here, Mr. Poirot, not even Inspector Stevens will know that it's you. You're going to be carried in a coffin. Watch his hand, Denny. It's in his pocket. All right, Denny. Get him in this coffin before that blasted Stephen gets yeah. his hand. Oh, he's heavy for such a little guy. Uh. That's it. Don't bother screwing the top down. We'll do that later. Yeah, he sure smells sweet. Like a flower almost. Never mind that. Let's get going. Yeah, I'll take the back end. Uh, uh, Don't hurry now. All right. Hold it a second, buddy. Officer, please. We are dealing with the dead. Oh, I, I am sorry. Well, I see you're still working, Mr. Love. Yes, Inspector. Unfortunately, our sad work never ends. Something smells pretty funny to me around here, Riley. What would you say it was? I don't know, sir, but it sure smells to high heaven. That's it with perfume. Let's have a look in that. Grab it, Riley. Don't move up. Will you kindly assist me, Monsieur Stevens? Ah, I'm glad you're all right, Poirot. All right. Mon ami, I did not mind the blow on the head. But did you have to be so stupid as to allow them to drop this coffee? Drop? Hey, wait a minute, Poirot. Don't get sore. Where are you going? I'm not angry, my friend. I merely go home to take a bath. <laughs> Then listen next week when Agatha Christie, America's favorite mystery writer, brings you her favorite sleuth, Hercule Poirot, starring Harold Huber in The Parallel Murder Case. Music for Poirot is composed and conducted by Sylvan Levin. The program is directed by Carl Eastman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.